I'm with us tonight, Councillor uh, Pastor Greg, Craig Hall, and uh, we ask Craig if you'd mind saying the uh, Lord's Prayer for us tonight to pray before the Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, councillors. Thank you for the opportunity tonight. And uh, on behalf of uh, people of Parramatta, I just want to thank you for the work you do. And it's a, uh, a, a great responsibility and a great honour. And I know you all put your heart and soul into it. So if you would join with me and indeed lead me in the uh, Lord's Prayer tonight. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy will, will be, be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread, bread and as we give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, and lead us not into temptation, but lead us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, power and the glory, forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Craig. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Councillors, uh, we declare the meeting open at about 6.31. Um, the City of Parramatta Council acknowledges the Parramatical people of the Darug Nation as the traditional custodians of this land and pays its respects to their ancient culture and their elders past and present. Members of the public, please note this is a public meeting that will be recorded and streamlined on the internet. The recording will be archived and available on Council's website. Councillors, are there any apologies for tonight's council meeting? I think Councillor Wern is with us, I think, um, on screen somewhere, I think she was. Yep, she's here. So we have no apologies. Yes, I'm here, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillors, are there any declarations of interest for tonight's meeting? No declarations of interest. Councillors, we're about to, to move in relation to... I'm just looking for this uh, report, isn't it? This, this is the recommendation here? Yeah. Uh, Council, yeah Councillor Tyrrell. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to move a procedural motion. Uh, point of order, Lord Mayor. Yes, Council. Lord Mayor, you, with due respect, you said declarations of interest to... In... You said declarations of interest, but there were then item seven, no matters of urgency. Yes, Councillor. No, but you didn't go through the running order, Lord Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. not being difficult, I'm not being pedantic, but that is that is the running order. Yeah, Councillor, I and must then... have missed it, overlooked it. Sorry, Councillor, uh, number seven, matters of urgency. Nothing on that, Councillor. Lord Mayor, I move. Lord Mayor, thank you for the... I'd like to I move. Thought, Councillor, I've already called uh, Councillor. Well, Lord Mayor, with respect, again, you called that before the, the matter of urgency. I was already up. Lord Mayor, I move procedural motion. Well, hang on, Lord Mayor, can, can, I, can I just say... As chair of the meeting, it's your call, and I know it's your it call. Is your call yeah. But I did. Can I bring it to your attention that you did miss an item on the on the business paper? Then you moved straight to to the agenda item, and I brought it back to the attention. It should start again from there, Lord Mayor. Well, I haven't. Uh, and I was on my it. feet for after that before Councillor Tyrrell. Well, I hadn't moved the agenda. I hadn't moved to the agenda actually, but um, I well, had it's an agenda to... item. You went straight to the. the but I didn't call it. I didn't call it. But uh, I think councillors. Uh, you call for a procedural motion, isn't it? Yeah, I'll call for a procedural motion, Lord Mayor. I wish to move a procedural motion to consider um, that uh, the recommendation at item 18, one, 18, sorry, 8.1 be considered as three separate recommendations. Do you have a second of that, Count? Second. There's any seconders? Councillor Issa? Is there any discussion? All those in favour? Aye. Clear it, carry. Councillors, can we have a show of hands on a procedural motion? Why? Well, you, it's been, it's been councillors call for a councillor hand. Like we have a council, councillors call for it, so we'll put our hands up. She's just asking for a thing. Just, can we have the hands, please, councillors? All those in favour of procedural motion? One, two, three, four, five, six. Against? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Uh, the procedural motion is defeated. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd foreshadow. Yes. I'd like to foreshadow, Lord Mayor, that part one, A, that council, is it up on the board? Yeah, that council supports a museum focused on science and innovation as part of an arts and cultural river precinct in Parramatta. B, that council strongly believes that Willow Grove and St George's Terraces are highly significant to Parramatta and must be retained in any future developments on these sites. Thank you, Councillor Davis. C, that the current proposed building design be reconsidered to retain, sympathise with and incorporate Willow Grove and St George's Terrace. And D, that an urgent meeting be convened between the Premier of New South Wales, the Honourable Scottis Berejiklian, interested councillors and relevant government officers before the 16th of July 2020 to discuss the retention of Willow Grove and St George's Terraces. Part two, Lord Mayor. Part two to be deferred until part one is resolved. And part three, that council reaffirm its support for retention of Willow Grove and St George's Terraces as part of the museum focused on science and innovation as part of an arts and cultural river precinct in Parramatta and advise the Department of Planning and Writing in accordance with the time of lodgement and submissions and the terms of consistent with the resolution of December 9, 2019 and B, receive and note the draft minutes of the Heritage Advisory Committee Extraordinary Meeting on the 18th of June 2020, attachment to and advise the Department of Planning accordingly with the time of lodgement and the submission. Lord Mayor, with the indulgence of the Chamber, I've read my motion. Do you have a second? Yeah, yes, Councillor Davis seconded, seconded that, Lord Mayor. Yeah. Uh, with the indulgence of the Chamber, I will, I've read that out, Lord Mayor, and I'll leave my replies in reply. Yeah, uh, so, you've read it out very fast. I'm not too sure everybody's read the uh, motion. Yeah, so, Lord Mayor, I actually move the motion as Sorry? printed. Okay, so, well, Councillor, no, as I move the you've, foreshadowed you've... motion, I'll move a motion as printed. No. So, we. Have... Foreshadowed motion. So, so Councillor Esber moved a foreshadowed here. motion. Yeah. I'm moving Councilor a motion says as motion printed. Is the motion. No, yeah. the terminology you Councilor Councilor foreshadowed Esber's motion. motion. Councillor Warren, could you just we've got a motion, a foreshadowed motion by Councillor Esber. No, we have wasn't. Now a motion. No, you don't. No, Councilor, no Councilor point Warren. of order. The motion moved by Councillor Esber was foreshadowed He's motion. Yeah. He's foreshadowed the motion to yeah, the yeah, motion please. printed. Yeah. I'm moving the printed motion, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, I move, I move what, I've moved what I've read out as the motion, Lord Mayor. That's what it is. Exactly. Okay. Thank right. you. That is what's before the chair at the moment, Lord okay. Mayor. All right. I hear now. Well, we'll, we'll take that you, uh, if you did say the word foreshadowed, I think that you've now corrected it, so I'll take it as being the motion. So that's the motion. I'll move an amended motion. Okay. I'll just I'll move an amend Can we just settle down and just take a time? Okay. The second, we have a, a, you're moving an amendment. Yes, Lord Mayor. I move an amendment. To move the motion as printed. As printed. Do we have a seconder? Councillor, Councillor Wilson. Okay, so we have a motion and an amendment. Uh, now, Councillor Esber is now not speaking for his uh, motion. So, uh, Councillor Wilson, are you speaking for the motion or for the amendment? Against the motion. Against the motion, okay. And I'd like to say that I really appreciate where Councillor Esber is coming from. And in fact, I think that Councillor Bradley had made an excellent suggestion, not one that I would have accepted in the first instance, but that we look to move Willow Grove. And in fact, something I find missing in this document, to be honest with you, is that I go through the park and I see that burnt down cafe all the time. And I couldn't help but think Willow Grove, with the way that it faced the river, that that sort of position would be a wonderful one for Willow Grove. And I say to you, councillors, that the government has decided to invest over a billion dollars in our city. Would I prefer that they didn't do it on the heritage area? Of course I would. But then I was thinking today, not just for Parramatta, but for all those kids out to our west, who, let's say you're down at Raby, or you're over in Penrith, or any of the areas of Fowler, etc., that have voted Labor for generations. You really have got nowhere that wasn't built by a council, a dinky die little thing. So for the whole of Western Sydney, this is, means instead of taking your kid on a one and a half hour journey from Parramatta or a two hour journey from Campbelltown, you'll be within 30 minutes. Now that is a wonderful thing. Would I have preferred the heritage kept? Yes. But I don't even know how those terraces in Macquarie Street got knocked down. I mean, that was a decision of this council, apparently. And how did that happen? I remember being briefed on every other development. I don't remember being briefed on that one. And we see this sort of thing time and again. So councillors, 
would I prefer the state government spend some more money and, and buy themselves a patch of land and go from there? The answer is yes. But I put it to you, when was the last time you saw a government commit itself to over a billion dollars spending in Parramatta? Something that I think is going to enrich the lives. Now, we have with us in the audience at the moment Craig Hall, who is the state director of the Christian Democratic Party. Now, you may have seen him on Twitter, etc., fighting for this museum, and indeed, Fred Nile has voted for it, and yet there's an electoral effect against him. But he is putting the, the uh, aspirations and the interests of Western Sydney ahead of political benefit. Whereas I say to those on the other side, all these people here that are going to most benefit from this gigantic cultural asset are people who have voted Labor often for decades. And yes, we were, they were given a lot of preferences, like the Bob Carr Metro that we never got, or the link from Carlingford to Epping, which we never got, which I know Councillor Esby are particularly fought for. So the simple answer is, um, are we going to stand up for our residents or not? And would I prefer that it was different? The answer is yes. Do I think there's anything to change the government's mind? Well, no. I even made a personal submission to someone I know, and I won't mention names, trying to get some sense of, of what's going on, and I was treated with the most incredible disrespect. There's a real feeling in there, well, why would you give uh, much to Parramatta? But what we have is we have a major investment, we have something going against all that, and if you can't see that, yes, do I, do I believe it's different? Would I support Councillor Bradley's excellent thought that he put us to the other day of, let's put in the submission that we move Willow Grove? Is it the optimum solution? Is it the one I would have picked? The answer is no. And as for St George's Terraces, go and have a look at it. You can see where it was carved down um, and it's just the facade. It is the worst sort of facadism. And I really believe that whether it stays or it goes is now not making that much um, Council, difference Council to... Council needed extension. Uh, uh, extension. I thought that was the warning light. Oh, sorry, you are correct. Sorry, Councillor. Yeah. Um, sorry. Would I prefer it's done differently? The answer is most definitely. And uh, various people have mentioned my record of voting very strongly with heritage. And uh, it is not with some little trepidation that I, I do this. But ultimately, there's got to be something in it for the people of Parramatta and to anyone who is in that ward. How are you going to go to your residents the next election and say, well, I just didn't think your kids deserved a major cultural icon in Sydney? OK, well, that's all I've got to say. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Barrett, are you speaking uh, for or against the Lord motion? Lord Mayor, I'm speaking against the, the motion. Against the motion, OK. Um, Lord Mayor, we've, we've been through this many, many times, and again I remind the Chamber through you, Lord Mayor, that there is not one single person sitting in this Chamber that doesn't absolutely love, adore, and, and, and want to preserve those magnificent heritage items, Willow Grove and St George's Terrace. There's, there's no doubt about that. We, we, have, we have repeatedly had um, unanimous motions supporting you, Lord Mayor, to write to the appropriate authorities and ministers in, in very strongly worded letters in order to express those concerns. And nothing has changed. Absolutely nothing has changed. However, I would like to remind everyone that in the middle of a pandemic where governments around the world, governments around the nation, councils, even our council, we have moved motion after motion, trying to support our residents, trying to tighten our belts, and the first thing that, that is normally gotten rid of in these when times are tight are the luxurious items, the luxuries, the caviar. This is a luxury. We are extremely privileged that we have a state government that has run the economy to the, to the benefit of New South Wales to such an extent that they can still... In, in, the, in the middle of these incredible challenges that we all face, they can still devote over a billion dollars of investment in Western Sydney. And I think that is an incredible thing, and I think that this should not be politicised. I think this should be a unifying factor for the Chamber to want this 
institution. Now, why do we want it? Because it introduces culture, sadly lacking culture and arts, into Western Sydney. And I would like to remind everyone that there's so much culture, cultural facilities in Eastern Sydney and in Sydney CBD, but very little in, in Western Sydney. We are the capital of Western Sydney. We are the very heart of Sydney. People from the eastern suburbs only have to travel 20 kilometres to get here. And I would also like to remind everyone that this institution has relocated on six, at six times already within New South Wales. So this is number seven. Okay, It's only number seven and it's only 20 kilometres and it is simply a response to Parramatta being a, a growing metropolis, a growing city, city, the river city, and it is appropriate that Parramatta and Western Sydney achieve cultural uh, facilities. In addition to it simply being cultural, it's also educational. Um, Lord Mayor, from, from my research I, I learnt that um, there are facilities, even accommodation facilities, for out-of-town students to, to, to actually reside there on a temporary basis whilst they can enjoy the facilities and, and, and learn the sciences and be incentivized. This is exactly what Australia needs. This is exactly what our students need. Um, for too long, we've been told that, educationally speaking, we're falling behind. We're falling behind the rest of the world in mathematics, in science, in, in, in the basics. Well, this is it. Lord Mayor, I, I would like Councillor... I would like Councillor uh, Garrard to withdraw that comment that she just made. Um, and, and I would like Councillor Jeffries to do likewise, Lord Mayor. Councillor, look, Councillor, can, uh, can Councillor Barrett you, you, You're not a joker. This is can, not a joke. Can, yeah. It's not a point. Lord Mayor, yeah, I'm point? not going to have this, this guy abuse me, right? I, I'm going to sit here. I'm not I abusing. Want, I want to get on with this meeting and have this vote. I'm actually supporting what he's saying. I want you to just carry on and get on with his job and give his speech. Every time I stand up, Lord Mayor, Councillor Jeffries just perpetually up, interrupts, uh, grow up, perpetually please. giggles, grow up, perpetually... Ben. Councillor Jeffries, please. It's absolutely up, perpetual, ben. and it has got to come to grow a up, stop. Ben. This Council is the same. Lord, this is the Jeffries. same person, Lord Mayor, that told me please, to, please, that please. told me to fuck off twice. Councillor, please. That's twice. Councillors, please. All right, councillors. Exactly. Please take down. Councillor Barrick, will you keep the language? With, Lord uh, Mayor, he did it twice. Councillor Councillor Jeffries. I know, Councillor Jeffries. I'm going to ask you to withdraw. Lord okay, Lord. I'm sure Councillor Barrick will withdraw his language. I, I'm, uh, I'm not withdrawing a quote, Lord Mayor. It's a quote. Well then, Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor, point of order. With respect, Lord Mayor, with respect, Councillor Barrick, through you to Councillor Barrick. Councillor Barrick, you've been in this chamber now for three years to use language like that. There's other language I'm quoting no, what look, the language that was used to, yes, against... I understand, Councillor Barrick, but this is a chamber of the elected people of Parramatta that put exactly, it Exactly. And, and we have to show more respect. We have to show more respect to the chamber. Using language like that, Lord Mayor... Okay. Okay, Councillor. Use a language like that okay. should be withdrawn. Councillor Barrick, will you please, Councillor Barrick, will you please just withdraw the, the language, and then I'll ask Councillor Jeffries. Lord Mayor, please, that was that was uh, a, that was a quote. Okay. It wasn't my language. It was I was simply t saying to the chamber what I have okay. been called in this chamber by the very man that sits. Order, order again, Lord Mayor. That was a quote at the two or three council meetings ago. This is the current council meeting that it's on now. The word was used again, and I ask you to ask him to withdraw. Uh, Councillor Barrick. They've been asked to withdraw the word, uh, which I'm not going to use again, but could you just withdraw that and maybe use another word? Um, and I'll ask Councillor Jeffries also. Okay, to, yeah. Lord Mayor, I, I withdraw, I yes. withdraw, and I would like that, I would like, through you, Lord Mayor, through you, I would like. We've, we've been through that, haven't we? Yeah, Councillor, uh, but yeah, let's let Councillor Barrick speak in silence, please. Lord Mayor, yeah. Lord Mayor the use of profanities by Councillor Jeffries towards me is routine. It has to come to a stop. Point of order. Yeah, but what's your point of order, Councillor? This is all done for Ben's little videos, his little, little silly little games. Okay, so we're all tired of it. Everyone wants to have this vote. We're tired of Councillor Barak's silly little games. Let's just get on with this. And if you don't want to, if you don't, Councillor, Councillor Barak, if you don't want to apologise, you want to make up stories about people, then you know, you'll go on a code. Simple as that. It's on the record. Councillor Jeffries. No, it's not on the record. Watch go, the videos. Videos. Councillor Barak has, has withdrawn the words, so can we just move on? Councillor Barak, no, Lord, Lord Mayor, I would like a direction to Councillor Jeffries to cease and desist his profanities towards me. Councillor. 
Councillor May that is law point, point of order again, Stop Lord Mayor. Stop making Mayor. up that nonsense, Councillor, Councillor Barrack has withdrawn, which is fine. Yeah. No need to apologise. The profanities between Councillor Jeffries and Councillor Barrack should be taken outside or should be debated or discussed at another matter. This is a forum that you have yeah. called the special council meeting yeah. within your right. We should treat you it as a special right. council meeting. So can we please get on with the meeting, Lord Mayor? Councillors, I'll remind you we're in a House of Government and we need to have respect for the, for the House of Government, please. So, Councillor Jeffries, I understand your situation, but if we could just please, uh, I've asked Councillor Barrick to withdraw, he's withdrawn. Uh, if we could just hear Councillor Barrick in silence, um, and I, you know, we, we can move on in the meeting, please. And the profanities, Lord Mayor. Well, I'm sure. Lord, okay. Lord Mayor, I'm not going to be defamed in this no, chamber no, no. by this guy, right? Okay, we all know what he's up to, we all know his game, right? I'm not going to be defamed. Right, so can you please give me some guidance? If he's going to make defamatory comments, do I need to get... Point of order, Lord, point of order, Lord yes, Mayor. Once again, on, can, councillors be, can, can councillors be acknowledged by their titles? We are councillors. We, we, we are in the we place councillors. of government. It's not yeah. this guy. Okay. So, Councillor uh, Barrick, uh, I, I, I missed what you actually said to Councillor like, Jeffries. I would like a, a ruling from the Chair for, for Mr Jeffries to cease and desist using profanities when I'm on my feet. Toward, towards me, Lord Mayor. Council I wanted to stop, Councilor and I want Jeffries, a ruling to that can effect. Can we just get some understanding in this meeting that we will decease Councilor and desist? Councillor Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor, yeah. I did not make a comment to to Councillor Barrett, not one. So I'm not going to play this game. If either he withdraws the comment uh, without at reservation, or he'll go on a code of conduct. And I want your guidance to to advise me how, how we're going to deal with this guy because it's not you cannot make defamatory comments in this in this chamber. Simple as that. Lord Mayor, it's not defamatory when it's truth. And you, you be my guest. There are courts. Go right ahead. Let's see how you go. Counsel, two cases. Counsel, two, two counsel, let's see how you go. Councillors, we'll go. have to either stop this meeting. We'll have to have a cease this meeting or else we do. I want to move on with this. a very important matter. Uh, Councillor Jeffries says he didn't say it, Councillor Barrick, so I wasn't there to hear it. Um, if Councillor Jeffries hasn't said it, but I ask him to desist... If it, if it has happened, I ask him to desist from having it further in, further in the meeting so we can move on. So, Councillor Barrick, I didn't hear it personally. Uh, he's saying he didn't say it, so I'm, so I'm You've heard it in the past, though, Lord Mayor, have I, you not? Well, I, but not tonight. I didn't hear it. But in the past, Lord Mayor, you've heard but him point of use Lord profanities yes, towards yeah, me. Councillor, what's your got to come to a stop. I, b I believe you've already ruled on this issue. I have issue. ruled on it. And um, councillors have the choice of either they can move dissent in the chair or... They can go with your okay. ruling. Okay. I've, I've ruled the meeting that I didn't hear his thing. I've asked for him to, uh, you know, your situation, you've withdrawn yours. Councillor Jeffries is saying he didn't say it, so he's asked, I'm, I asked you to desist from using those sort of uh, urgings of Councillor um, Barrick in, in, during this meeting, if you could, and so we can move on, you know. No, well, Councillor, Council, sorry, Lord Mayor, look, I... Just for a record, yep. I didn't say any words like okay. that. But I did think, I did think uh, Councillor Garrard's comments was quite funny. Well, Councillor Garrard, please, can you... And all councillors, while the <laughs> councillor is speaking, can we please hear them in silence? We are a professional body. We'd like to act that way, please. So, Councillor Barrick, I'd just ask if we could move on and try and get to the, get this situation. I don't even know where I'm in time. You might have to start again here. Uh, councillor Garrard, ask Councillor Barrick, please. Yes, L Lord Mayor. Well, well it's, uh, what, what Councillor... Jeffries just said is that he thought it was funny and he was giggling his head off and the comment that he thought was funny was Councillor Garrard imputing that there's a, 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 a lack of uh, legal knowledge um, in, in, in Sydney as well. When I was commenting about um, how there's a, a lack of cultural facilities and, and, and lack of certain aspects of in, the, in our education system and, and so she decided to have that, that, that crack and I would like that withdrawn. I'd like an apology for that Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor, Councillor Garrard, um, obviously Councillor Barrack was giving a, a very good uh, uh, affirmation of the, the culture of the Western suburbs and her educational standards. Um, I didn't hear what you said, but can you t clarify that you w will withdraw those comments if you said anything to the, that satisfies the councillor so we can move on, please? You, you've, whatever it was, you've withdrawn your comment, is that what you're saying? I didn't make a formal comment, Lord Mayor. I'm happy for Councillor Barrack to continue. Okay. Lord Mayor, she, she, said, she said there's a lack of uh, legal knowledge as well. Having a, having a dig at, at, my being, at my being a lawyer. But that's okay, Lord Mayor. I'll take that elsewhere. Thank you very much for that. 
Okay, thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Um, now, you were, you were coming, saying some very positive things about the Lord Mayor, I got, yeah. I got to the point of, um, of the fact that there is, there's some... Here we go again, Lord Mayor. What, the, the giggling and the crap has to stop. Who's, Lord, this Lord man Mayor, to my Lord, right. Lord Mayor, Councilors. could I formally move that we discern for five minutes? <laughs> I ask, uh, you, I ask you to defer the meeting for well, five minutes, Lord we'll, Mayor. We'll, we'll do, we can defer the meeting for five minutes. Is there a second for that? Well, I can defer. We're, okay, we'll defer for five minutes till we cool down. Lord Mayor, it's perpetual. Oh, it's yeah. just perpetual. Councillor, it has to come to a stop. Councillor, I'll talk to him in during the five minutes. Thank you. We'll, we'll stop for five minutes. It's now five to seven. We'll go to come back at seven o'clock. Councillor Barrick, back to you uh, debating. Um, the, the situation in relation to uh, speaking, I think, at that stage. We are, we are debating the amendment, but... Um, yeah. we're, de we're still on the motion at this stage. Yeah, you can do it. Well, he's speaking, against the, yeah, he's against, speaking the against the motion. Could okay. we please have that on the screen? Not Because you've got the wrong thing on the screen at the You're moment. The no. Yeah, we're voting for the motion. Well... You're speaking that way, Ben, anyway. We know what you're speaking. <clears throat> okay. it's, it's the motion, Lord Mayor, and I'm speaking again, against okay, it. Right. Lord Mayor, thank you. Just to summarise, um, just to summarise, Lord Mayor, I, I made a few points. The first one was that it's a massive investment at a time of coronavirus, and, and it's a luxurious thing, and we're very privileged to have it. The second thing is that uh, it's a major economic uh, benefit for the city through visitation and through employment. The third thing is it's a major benefit to the city through the cultural facilities uh, for the centre of Sydney, where, where the, most of the population of Sydney live, only 20 kilometres away from the CBD. And uh, in light of the fact that it has moved on six previous occasions, this is number seven, it's quite normal. Um, then I made the point, Lord Mayor, that there's an educational benefit uh, with the students um, having accommodation there who are from out of town so that they can... Um, be incentivised uh, through through uh, science and, and, and ma mathematics and those sorts of things which will be on display. Um, and uh, I made the most critical point that, that there is unanimous support in this chamber for the continuation uh, and the longevity of those two heritage items, the, the magnificent um, Willows Grove and St George's terraces. There's, there's absolutely no, no doubt about that. And in a perfect world, if we could retain them, then we very much would like to. And indeed, Lord Mayor, I commend you on your motion because it says precisely that. It actually says there are, there's a commonality between the motion that Councillor Esber um, has, well, the current motion, and, and, the, and the foreshadowed or, or, the, or the, the variation. Um, B... Uh, actually mentions that there's a lack of consideration of heritage as key elements in the design, and you actually seek uh, for the state government to review this. So we're all on the same page. This chamber is on the same page insofar as the heritage is concerned. Um, there's no doubt about that. Um, it's, it's the, the simple point is that we, we on this side of the chamber... We don't want to see this incredible investment that we're so fortunate to have be lost and we, we must have it for the purposes of the employment, the educational facilities and the cultural facilities which this city and Western Sydney desperately need. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. So do we have any further speakers in relation... Councillor Tyrrell was called earlier. I've lost track of where it was up to, but Councillor Tyrrell. Yeah, OK, Councillor Tyrrell. <coughs> Thank you, Lord Mayor. So I'm speak speaking against the motion and for the amendment, Lord for, Mayor. For the amendment. Okay. Um, if you wish me to, I'm happy to sit down if you wish. No, no, that's fine. Sorry, Thank Councillor. No, no, all good, Lord Mayor. Thank I just want to check. Yeah. Uh, Lord Mayor, I stand here in support of Western Sydney and this $1.5 billion investment. I said it at the previous meeting. I'll say it at this meeting again. This is what we are entitled to get as Western Sydney. We've had the White Hair Brigade from the eastern suburbs for the last couple of weeks protesting at the Powerhouse Museum in the city, saying, oh, no, I can't go to Parramatta. It's got to stay where it is. We've had um umpteen articles in the paper which have been factually incorrect. 
which said, oh no, shouldn't go to Parramatta, not entitled. Well, damn well, we are here, I apologise, Lord Mayor, for using that word. I'll, I'll be, Lord Mayor, we are here to re represent Western Sydney. The people of Western Sydney deserve their Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences and Space. You know, Lord Mayor, this is what it's all about. We are here to defend the people of Western Sydney. This is a cultural icon that's coming to Parramatta. All the stories out there are wrong. Um, we've even had an actor from down at, uh, living at Pitwater who pretends to be a, uh, a uh, you know, surf lifesaver telling us how to do you know, what the people of Parramatta think. Well, I'm sorry, but he needs to go back to acting because as far as anyone's concerned in Parramatta, the silent majority of people of Parramatta uh, don't give two hoots about it. They don't watch his show, so why the hell are they going to listen to what he has to say about Parramatta? Lord Mayor, everyone has been speaking against Parramatta getting it. Well, I want to raise, I want to raise three notable people that actually have had the gall to get on radio and to be actually quoted in the, in the media, and that's Barney Glover, who spoke up for having the museum there. Yes, he's the chair of the board, but he's, all, he's also Western Sydney. He's also Western Sydney Uni. He had the gall to go on 2GB. So do, so do Andy Marks. He stood there, he got on 2GB, he had his say, he said we need it in Western Sydney. And the last stick in the, into the ALP, which I think is damn good, is David Borger got up and said, we need to have the museum in Western Sydney. He's an ALP, ALP man, but even he sees the investment in Western Sydney is more important. I'm very sorry about Willow Grove. And the whole reason I wanted to split the motion tonight into three is so I could not just, not for particularly to vote against Willow Grove, I want to save it. But at the end of the day, in my opinion, the decision's been made, so stop, keep, stop poking the bear. That was why I wanted to vote against it. But let me say to you this, Lord Mayor, when you have the likes of David Borger get up and say that we need this museum there, and he's an ALP man, and he's got more to say and more power than what they do in opposition in the New South Wales State Parliament, that tells me something, that they've got some problems in there in the opposition, where they've then got to filter it down to council to try and get something done. Then, we've, then because they were getting so desperate, then we had the CFMEU turned up at Willow Grove saying, we're going to go and put a green ban. We're going to lie down in front of the bulldozers. That reminds me of election day. I've seen it before, I've seen it again. You put thugs against me, it just makes me stand up and say, don't intimidate me, I'll stand for Western Sydney and I don't care what you say. We're here to represent Western Sydney and I won't be intimidated by thugs. I'm here to stay and I'm going to support what we deserve for Western Sydney. Thank you, Councillor. Do we have any further discussion? Uh, I, I don't know. Just, is it Councillor Davis next? No. Uh, Councillor Bradley? Councillor Pandy, I understand. Councillor Pandy? Now, Councillor, as I said, no, we, we're not having two for against, but I, one councillors all have a, their say and then we can, uh, we can move on from there, I hope. Thank you, Councillor Penny. Thank you, Lord Mayor. <coughs> Lord Mayor, I don't think anyone is against museum. So, so you're speaking, any... Councillor, you're speaking for your for, for the, motion. the motion. Thank for you, the motion. Councilor. Thank you. So I think there has been a lot of comments made about you know people being against the museum. I don't think anyone is against the museum at all on this side as well. But how does it make sense to demolish history to showcase history? And that's what I think you know personally I feel. Powerhouse Museum in city is 135 years old. We are relocating that. That's the selling point, that we are relocating Powerhouse Museum from um, uh, Ultimo to Parameter. Take an example of relocation. You're relocating your house. Imagine one bedroom, the stuff from one bedroom goes to Castle Hill, 
and the stuff from one bedroom goes to uh, Ultimo and one, one part of your house comes to Parameda. That's not relocation. And again, I will emphasize that it's, we are, no one is against having a museum. What we are against, or personally what I feel is, that something like Willow Grove, which has such a big history, and again, Premier, last year in February said, we have never said it will, be, it will go as part of Powerhouse Museum. This was in Feb last year. We have always said, of course, our intention is to save it. What has changed between last Feb and now that we can't save Willow Grove? Is that because by demolishing it, the government will save 40-odd million? Is that the rationale for demolishing history? This will not come back again once, once it's demolished. And I think that's what this motion is about. The motion is about saving Willow Grove, not, not having the museum. Museum, absolutely, we want it. It's something which will, our, you know, which, is, which will help our kids, help us. It will be good for education, good for learning, research, everything else. All those things which has been said about the museum absolutely is correct. It's the Willow Grove which should not be and must not be demolished. I'll leave it there, uh, Lord Mayor, but the question I'll say is, is this the best investment? Is the reloca relocation from the government the best investment at this time? Can we not create something which will still have the same impact in terms of, in terms of job creation, in terms of economy, in terms of the future uh, proofing of this area and having a museum? Probably we can. We should look at that. And that's what the motion is about, to have that discussion, to retain the Willow, Willow Grove, and also to have the museum as well at the same time. I'll leave it there, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, who's the next one? Councillor Council Bradley, I think, next. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like to foreshadow an, an amendment uh, to <gasps> the uh, amendment if it gets up. And th the amendment would be to delete the words um, in the part A of um, recommendation part, part one, uh, the, where it says the council affirm its support for, I would change the words for a powerhouse museum in Parramatta just and delete museum. the reference to relocation of the Powerhouse Museum. Is your, your foreshadow is in relation to the motion? Is, that, is it to the motion that you're foreshadowing? No, to the amendment. To the amendment, okay. If, you can, oh, okay, if, we've heard if the, the motion fails, I would like to yeah, have that, that. Okay. amendment to Thank the you, amendment. Thank you. May I speak to it? Well, you can, I can't speak to a foreshadow until it's up. And at the moment, it hasn't been won, so you have to wait. You okay. Can speak okay. to it. Councillor, uh, I think Councillor... Davis, is it? Is that the next person? Lord Mayor, Sorry. Councillor Sorry. Bradley doesn't have a seconder. Sorry, Lord Mayor. But, but it's a foreshadow. Do you, know, do you need one at this stage? Well, you, yeah, you do. Otherwise, it, nothing's foreshadowed. Okay, so we have a second of foreshadowed motion. Do we have one? I don't think... I'm getting instructions here that for a foreshadow, when you can mention you're having a foreshadow until such time as it comes up. Is that correct? Okay, that's, I've got that correction. So you're right, Kathleen Bradley. Councillor Davis. Um, Lord Mayor, I have two questions. Can I ask those before I speak to... Yes, the, that's right. You thank can ask you. a question, yeah. Okay, so first question is, um, in the um, EIS, it states on page 109 of the first document that the potential future power line and laneway connection will also facilitate direct east-west connections to Church Street and the future light rail stops. Could somebody please provide some in insight into what that actually means? Ms Concato, can you help at all? Um, yes, Lord Mayor, and through you. Um, the EIS provides limited information in relation to the point that Councillor Davis is making. It does state that there is potential for the western part of the Powerhouse Museum to connect to the podium of the adjoining Meriton development. However, there is very limited detail within the EIS at this stage and I would expect that further detail will be provided at the next stage, which is the detailed design stage. Thank you. Councillor, you happy with that? Um, so is that, Second. sorry, I just wanted to, so is that in reference to the power line or the laneway connection and would that be... 
just for access to the light rail or would that also be for evacuation in a case of floods or emergencies? Ms Gunkara. Um, through you, Lord Mayor, my comment was in relation to what's labelled the power line, uh, which is the connection um, to the Meriton building on the northern side. Um, my understanding is that, that, that the focus of that is very much about creating a new integrated retail destination. Um, in terms of connections to um, Church Street, the EIS does not rely upon a new connection to Ch Church Street purely for evacuation. Thank you. Thank you. And Lord Mayor, my other question is um, in relation to the flood report. Has the flood report submitted as part of the supporting documents for the CBD planning proposal been used to inform the EIS? And if so, has that document been made public? Ms Picardo, is it, can you answer that? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, I believe that the draft study that Councillor Davis is um, referring to um, has been made public. Um, I would need to take on notice whether it has actually been taken into account in, during the preparation of the EIS. Thank you. Okay. Davis, and please. sorry, another question that I have is um, in relation to the flood... No, sorry. Lord Mayor, I'll have to sit down and think. I had another question, but okay. I've, it's just it's just escaped me. Um, and I was going to speak, but is yeah, there anyone? You can, well, you can sit and speak at the moment. Uh, is there any other discussion? Councillor Prosev. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, what I would like to say is that while Councillor Terrell was talking about Western Sydney, it made me remember that... Councillor, you're speaking for the motion. I'm speaking for the motion, Thank Lord you. Mayor, and against the amendment. Thank you. Um, I suppose the first thing I should do is congratulate Ms Concato's staff because anybody who's ever had the pleasure of reading the EIS would realise that it's really difficult to get your head around, particularly seeing it keeps repeating itself. So I congratulate them that they could actually put together a document that makes sense because <laughs> I think it's a feat in itself. But on to Councillor Tyrrell. I was really interested that he spoke about Western Sydney and how he stood for Western Sydney because, Lord Mayor, this is about Parramatta and Parramatta is the cradle of a nation. Parramatta actually fed the colony when it was starving before the Second Fleet arrived. And we are a city whose heritage is built on domestic architecture. We don't have any big buildings like the big banks and things they have in the city and they have them in a lot of country towns. We have domestic architecture like old government house, like Experiment Farm, like Elizabeth Farm, like Willow Grove and St George's Terraces. They are our heritage this domestic sense of place because we were somewhere that actually looked after the rest of the colony at one stage. The colony depended on us. So with saying that, um, I would also like to say that this EIS, the, all the impact statements, the heritage, the social impact, everything does not look one iota at the history and the, of Parramatta and what Parramatta means to the country and to the people of Parramatta. In fact, it talks about Western Sydney ad nauseum. It talks about bringing a building to Western Sydney ad nauseum. None of it talks about Parramatta and that in itself is as representatives of Parramatta, we should be concerned and we should be upset that a cultural institution that's being planned to be uprooted from somewhere else and brought to Parramatta doesn't at least have some connection with the place that it's being brought to because there is a lot of history from Parramatta that would be in, that, in the powerhouse that probably could be brought to Parramatta, but that's not part of the thing. The thing is 
to dump this building here and really when you look at the architecture and you read all the reports, it could be a building that went anywhere and I think it was the Batuta advocate today who said it should go, <laughs> it should go to Broken Hill. So the people from Broken Hill don't have to travel to Parramatta or to the city to look at the, the museum. Now, the one thing that I did say in this, in this EIS, and I'm not sure now which part, there were three options. The first option was do nothing and retain heritage. The second option was an alternative location and there were a few options there, nothing really specific. And the third option was the powerhouse. And all the third option talked about was the architecture, was the building, what the building was offered. And I can't remember where one word of Parramatta was to do with the Parramatta Powerhouse project. And I have to say, Lord Mayor, that the buildings in this same thing, the power, the uh, um, Willow Grove and the terraces were considered to be worthy of heritage of straight heritage listing. They were given a high grading, which makes them eligible for, for state heritage listing. We are knocking down something that belongs not only to us but to the, to the rest of the country. As for as for us getting investment, I just want to point out that while the state is giving to Parramatta, it's taking away. We got a stadium, we lost a pool and a stadium. We're getting a light rail, we're losing all our trees, we have lost a railway line that was there for well over 100 years, we've lost a pub that was there longer than the Perth city's been established. We're getting a museum, not a cultural precinct, that include the Riverside Theatres, a building. The extension. Uh, Thank you, Lord Mayor. All those in favour. So, and to get this building, Absolutely. we're going to lose the demolition of our heritage and we're going to lose income from a, from a, a parking station. We don't get something for nothing. Everything that we are told that we are getting and how lucky we are, we are losing more than we are getting. It may not have a monetary value in billions of dollars, but it has a value to this city. And you cannot always put value on heritage. This, but this heritage belongs not only to Parramatta, it belongs to the country. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. So um, is there any further discussion? Councillor Davis. I Sorry, Lord Mayor, I have re I've remembered my questions. Um, one of them f was following on from the previous one, and that is that um, in the EIS, it refers to a one in a hundred year flood, but I believe that this may have been revised and um, that there's been advice um, that, con that is opposes that or op opposing that. Can you please confirm if this is now considered to be a one in 20 year flood zone? Ms. Concato, uh, is there any assistance there? Um, through you, Lord Mayor, um, our commentary very much relates to the 1% AEP, which is the 100-year flood. Um, the foreshore land um, is affected by the 1 in 20, um, and that will also need to be given consideration. Thanks, Thank Lord Mayor. And the last question was, um, are you aware of a loophole in the planning system that allows buildings to be demolished ahead of a project approval? This actually happened at um, Sydney Uni um, Darlington ca campus where a building was knocked down before the project approval was granted and it was, uh, it th they got away with it because of a loophole. So is yes. council aware of that and has that loophole been tightened up, so to speak? Ms. Goncata, can you help at all? Um, through you, Lord Mayor, I'd prefer to take that on notice. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Goncata. Thanks, Thanks Lord Mayor. Notice. No. Um, Lord Mayor, would you like me to speak yeah, so now? Yes, so you speak so in favour of the motion. Okay, yeah. speak in favour of the motion. Yeah. Um, Lord Mayor, I hope that everyone has read this motion that is before them because it is actually simply asking that we have a meeting with the Premier to discuss this issue of Willow Grove and St George's Terrace. 
that is simply what this is asking. We've now had an extension of time for submissions. There is no pressure for the submission to be handed in next Tuesday. We have until the 21st of July. And that is why we've actually framed this um, motion in this way. So I'd ask all in the chamber to consider that tonight. There is nothing actually in this motion that is opposing any of the recommendations that were put forward by the council officers. It's purely taking an opportunity for us to use that time wisely in the lead up to the submissions closing. At Lord Mayor, I've, I have enjoyed listening tonight because it's been like a bingo game. I actually had a little card drawn up before I arrived and we've had quite a few of those, you know, quite a few of the words come out already. So there's been jobs, pandemic, COVID, 3,000 jobs, 4,000 jobs, Borgia, love, Willow Grove, billion dollars, heritage, east and west, employment, 600 million, 1 billion, 1.5 billion. I mean, the number goes up. How much is it really going to be? Council Space, Council icon. Councillor Issa, please. Space Silence, please. icon, Borgia. Councillor Issa, please. It's been, it's been a fun fest all along, okay. Lord Mayor. But the one thing that we have to remember is that we need money on the arts in Western Sydney, not just in performance spaces, museums, galleries, but investment in the Western Sydney arts sector. We all know the pathetic levels of arts funding channelled to Western Sydney arts and the significant shortage not only of cultural venues, but events compared to other parts of Sydney. All the more reason to ensure that this seemingly grand investment in the arts and sciences in Parramatta is done correctly delivering what we need, where we need it, and addressing the shortfalls. This is about a cultural change to ensure equity in funding, access, events, and venues in Parramatta. The disappointment is that from woe to go, this has been a haphazard project. It promised a new arts and cultural precinct, but what has been presented right here couldn't be further from that reality. This was to be an arts and cultural precinct that brought the beautiful Riverside theatres and a museum together with state funding for both of them and a pedestrian bridge to join them together. It was to be a precinct that embraced the river foreshore and linked the civic centre of our city to the river while at the same time enhancing the heritage of our great city. Here we sit right now in June 2020, sorry, July 2020, we still do not have one dollar of money to be um, honoured towards the Riverside Theatres project from the state government. This is a precinct that is being funded on one side of the river and not on another. This is a precinct that is not what we were told we were going to get when those contracts were signed. The, the dis so what of the heritage? Twice this chamber has unanimously supported the retention of Willow Grove and St George's Terrace as part of the redevelopment of this site. Alas, that's not what is presented in this EIS. Why wasn't the heritage saved? The first death knell was when the design brief didn't require the retention of Willow Grove and St George's Terrace. And we fought it. We fought it in the trenches. We wrote letters. We visited the minister. We did, me we did media. We had a community forum. We did whatever it took to get the government to listen and they wouldn't. They would not listen to the people of Parramatta. Why did they choose a design that didn't save the heritage? because the plan they went with provided the most commerciality. After each radio interview, op-ed and webinar, we get a different take on what this building will be as the pressure increases on the dedicated public servants who are trying to ensure the integrity of the mass is not compromised while knowing full well that what is being delivered in Parramatta is a shadow, a shadow of its former self. Sure, I hear you cry that this is about rotating exhibitions, Barney displaying the thousands of items locked away in the hills, and I hope they're all watching, a move away from the traditional museum. Yeah, we get all of that mantra, but what we don't get is this. Why are councillors representing the people of Parramatta prepared to accept a building that is not suitable for, for the site, raises massive concerns around flooding, has questionable evacuation points and isn't accommodating of our heritage nor our river strategy Council, and civic link visions. Move for extension. Yes. All those in favour? 
Councillor Davis. Yes. In the words of the Lord Mayor, the powerhouse decision and the citing of it was made during Council's administration period and indicated that perhaps another site would have been found if councillors had been involved. Council had invested heavily in a grand plan for the foreshore, but that had to be scuppered for the powerhouse. But you can't look a gift horse in the mouth, hey, Lord Mayor? Well, any others in this chamber tonight who want to follow that way of thinking, we're here to make sure this city gets the best, gets to the best to position the city as a whole for the future. As we go through life, we're taught to maximise our assets. Personal assets mean different things to different people and in the case of this city, its assets are perfectly clear. It's our location in the geographical heart of Sydney. It's our river, it's our park, it's our people, it's our natural, built and social heritage. If I hear one more spineless person tell me that if we don't, if we don't take what we're given, then we won't get anything, then I will just say to them, you are just being haunted by your mother who used to tell you that if you didn't behave, you wouldn't Councilors, be able to go please. outside and Councilors, play. Councilors, because please. that is the problem. Everyone is Time saying is that we Councilors. won't get what we deserve, but we need to fight for it, and this is our opportunity to fight. We've got one last chance at this, Lord Mayor. This is it. Accept this motion, move this motion, support it, and let's have one last showdown with the Premier and explain to her why these buildings are so important, not just to Parramatta, not just to New South Wales, but to Australia. Thank you, Councillor. OK, now, if there's no further discussion, uh, Councillor, we have got to... Um, I think you've spoken, you've spoken already. Uh, Councillor Zeta, you're speaking for the motion, for the amendment, I presume? Yeah, thank you, Gail. <coughs> no, we don't need any uh, so, things, thanks. Councillor Davies wants to talk about opportunity. And she's got the goal to raise tonight opportunity. Lord Mel, I'll tell you what the opportunity tonight is. Opportunity to play political games. And that is what we are getting tonight, ladies and gentlemen. It's quite simple, Lord Mayor. We have a once-in-a-generation opportunity. I'll read, out, I'll read out to you a few things that our staff, in collaboration with members of this chamber, have put together today in a 48-page report to be sent in our submission, Lord Mayor. Data, facts in this document that are missed, misrepresented by the media and by members of this chamber who want to go out there and talk to the media and disperse with their own fiction, with their own lies, or because they want to play, ding, ding, point order, Lord political Mayor. games. Point of order. Councillor, Councillor, yes, point of order. Again, Lord Mayor, lies. You know, like, this is just pretty heavy words, Lord Mayor. Well, Councillor, maybe mistruths. Lord Mayor, that's, that's not a point it's of order. It's not a point of order. We know it's not a point of order. It's not a point of order. Can you move on, please? Lord Mayor, I'll quote this from our, from our report. The opportunity for powerhouse Parramatta to contribute to the realisation of an exceptional world-class cultural and arts facility that nurtures a thriving social and cultural precinct for the city of Parramatta at the heart of the central Sydney is a once-in-a-generation opportunity. We, Lord Mayor, through the motion that I've put up, Lord Mayor, with hopefully the support of the Chamber tonight, recognise the aspirations and commitment of the New South Wales Government to strive for a world-class museum and cultural facility demonstrated through the entire process, Lord Mayor. While the, pro while the proposed scheme has many positive elements that will deliver a successful museum, there does remain a number of key outstanding issues requiring resolution. Lord Mayor, I'm not standing here and saying that we've got a perfect uh, proposal that, be, that has been put before us, Lord Mayor, hence the public exhibition. Hence, while the state government has extended the date for submissions by two weeks, Lord Mayor. Hence, while we are here tonight with our 48-page submission, to go back to them with a list of issues or matters that we would like to be raised, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, I actually get offended when we've got people from across the chamber here who want to raise Broken Hill and other members where such a museum could go to, Lord Mayor. If you are truly a representative of the city of Parramatta, you want the museum to be in Parramatta, Lord Mayor. And that is what I am standing here on my two feet today and I'm actually doing, Lord Mayor. I am not here playing politics. I am sick and tired of playing these games, Lord Mayor. Because of the people sitting opposite me today actually bothered to look at the facts. 
this is what they would actually learn. Western Sydney represents one in ten Australians, yet attracts only 1% of the Commonwealth Arts Program funding and 5.5% of the state's cultural arts heritage events funding, Lord Mayor. The report estimates also, Lord Mayor, that the fact that when you've got many, many young Parramatta residents having to travel to the inner west and Sydney CBD for entertainment, this is costing the city approximately $86 million a year of foregone income, Lord Mayor. This project, Councilor, this project in Parramatta will not only bring a world-class cultural precinct, Lord Mayor, but it will also bring jobs. Yes, jobs. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to be seeing 1.3 million people standing in line at Centrelink trying to get welfare, Lord Mayor. We are a party, and I can use the word party, and I'm not, I don't want to be playing games, Lord Mayor, but I will use my firm beliefs. I believe in a hand up and not a hand out, Lord Mayor. And I'm sick and tired of having members of the opposition sitting here trying to downgrade or downplay investment in this great city. Yes, I do understand what it is going to come. It is going to come at a cost. I hear you. Hence why we have raised these concerns and these matters in the report, Lord Mayor, that we are endorsing tonight, Lord Mayor. It, it is a shame. It is a shame that Willow Grove will be knocked down. I do agree with that, Lord Mayor. And I have supported two unanimous motions to that effect, Lord Mayor. But what else I want to say to you, Lord Mayor, is 10,000 regional New South Wales students will be coming to Parramatta for overnight stays. What a wonderful way to showcase our great city to members of the regional and country areas, Lord Mayor. A exhibition centre which will include 30,000 square please. metres, Lord Mayor. Councillor Prosev, please, held in silence, please. Lord Mayor, 30,000 square metres, including 18,000 square metres of exhibition and public space, Lord Mayor. What a wonderful addition to the city, Lord Mayor. I cannot believe that anyone would want to be standing opposite me speaking against that, Lord Mayor. Councillor, you need an extension of time. Do you favour? Lord Mayor, against. Okay. Councillor Prosy wants to talk about the lost stadium, the lost pool, Lord Mayor. Let me remind members of the other side of the chamber, Lord Mayor. They fought against Bankwest Stadium. What a great $300-plus million investment. Look at what wonderful economic benefits bring to the city, Lord Mayor. Our pool, absolute, Lord Mayor. A decision made outside of this chamber's time made by the administrator. But what are we getting, Lord Mayor, in return? A 90 plus million dollar world class aquatic centre, Lord Mayor. I am sick and tired of this political games, Lord Mayor. Let's agree on one thing. We have never seen this kind of investment in this city. And for once, stand up and acknowledge it and say thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Now we, uh, uh, Councillor Bradley. You're speaking which way? Uh, against the amendment, Lord Mayor. Against Thank the amendment. Thank, yeah, thank you, Lord, Lord, Lord Mayor. Has spoken first yet. This is the first time. Oh, so, I'm standing to speak them. again. You, you haven't spoken before, have you? You asked only for a foreshadow, I think, as I recall. Yes, I have moved to foreshadow. That's right. But, but, but obviously, if the amendment gets up, the foreshadow yeah. oh, doesn't you, get discussed. Oh, we, so we're I'm now having one, per, one I'm councillor speak. Choosing to speak. All night, but anyway, you've got speak to against speak. the amendment okay, right, right, on that right, right. basis. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I object on several grounds to this uh, amendment, but one of the main reasons I stand to object to it is because of the matter I was hoping to raise in my foreshadowed motion, and that's in terms of the reference to the relocation of the Powerhouse Museum. I believe that was an enormous waste of money to try to relocate a perfectly usable, good quality Powerhouse Museum that was located in Sydney, and to try to uh, rip it apart have some parts of it come to Parramatta, some parts go out to Castle Hill, and maybe other parts stay behind in the site where it is now. It was clearly a, a, a proposal to uh, get access to the high-priced real estate in inner Sydney and use it for another purpose or to sell it, where, whereas uh, Parramatta deserves its own museum. And that's what I was hoping to have acknowledged in, in my foreshadowed motion. We don't have to relocate the Powerhouse mu Museum at Ultimo in Sydney. We should leave it there. We should have left it there. And we need more culture. We need more applied arts and sciences across Sydney, not just in Western Sydney. Clearly, we need our own museum in Parramatta. And I'd suggest to you that the original motion provides for that. There is no suggestion that the original motion 
says that we don't want a museum. Of course we want a museum. Everybody's agreed on that. And everybody has also hopefully agreed that we want to preserve Willow Grove and St George's Terraces as critical heritage to uh, Parramatta. It's an important part of Parramatta's history. And we certainly deserve to uh, retain that. And I don't believe the amendment pays sufficient credit to the, uh, the, the need to preserve Willow Grove, even though there are references to it. It is quite clear the government intends to demolish Willow Grove and St George's Terrace, and that's totally unacceptable. We, we talk about the cost, uh, you know, the, we, a, million, a billion dollars for Parramatta. Well, I'd ask what the cost, what the saving is on the real estate sale for the uh, Powerhouse Museum at Ultimo. I would suggest that's possibly a, um, a cost-neutral cost arra arrangement, but um, I'd, I'd like to have somebody give me the analysis of that. And if we talk about cost, why isn't the state government more concerned about giving away hundreds of millions of dollars by not imposing a special infrastructure contribution levy on the enormous high-rise and profits of developers in the CBD of Sydney, where we have foregone hun literally hundreds of millions of dollars by not having a similar arrangement for value capture as what we have outside the, the CBD in, in this uh, local government area. So th the motion, the original motion, does not prevent a Parramatta Museum. It just seeks to have the best possible museum we can have for pr Parramatta, preserve those critical heritage items we have, and uh, to uh, allow us to have a, a useful discussion in terms of some of the shortcomings that are quite clear in the council staff's report. There are numerous shortcomings there. We still haven't resolved the issue of the 20 metre wide um, uh, civic um, uh, way and uh, the narrowing of the, um, that place to uh, 13 metres through the buildings and uh, of the powerhouse and uh, many other issues around architecture, uh, archaeology I mean, and um, the, the, the uh, important um, heri other heritage issues. So I, th I think um, we should defeat the amendment, go back to the original motion and pass that and, and to enable us to have critical discussions with the Premier and to get on and, and to ensure that we get the best possible museum for Parramatta that is a Parramatta museum and represents the values of Western Sydney and Parramatta for that matter. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. I think Councillor Jeffries, do you, you have your hand up? I think just before you, Councillor Jeffries. Well, yeah. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Lewis, as well. So um, you're speaking, look, obviously, for uh, yeah, I am. So, look, thank, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, look, <sighs> I remember that I've, I've been a uh, Liberal Party member for 25 years, and I'll come out for 25 years. And I, I, I remember the day I grew up in the, uh, you know, for the 13 years of the Labor government, 83 and 96, I remember that. And I remember the Hawke and Keating years. And they were just so, so far different to what you see now in front of Labor here today. Because... No Hawke Keating era government, or even potentially a, a Carr era government, would be against this, this investment. They would not be. And, you know, they, they would not be. They, Council, and I, I just. Here in silence, please. You know, look, and I, I, I just. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I look at myself, and, I, and I, I, you come to the chamber tonight, and, and you think, you know, how. In, in, in your time, and over over a quarter of a century lifetime, that you that in, in politics, that you would see a political party turn its nose up and turn away its support from its, from the local community and cheer on, cheer on, the lo please. cheer on the likes of uh, of what was it? Is it Leo Schofield? Is it? Is it? Karen. You know, and, and you know, I, I don't. I, 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 I understand, and I understand we got the, the, there, are, there are residents, in, and I'll be frank, right? I, I'm not here, I don't, I don't want to turn this into a major political Barney side. Councillor, but, 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 but I'll say I, I, there are residents in my community who would, who would have some sympathy for the argument that, well, you know, this is a hangover from the Baird era, and it was a hangover, and, and you know, I, I understand that, right? I, I get that. But the reality is this when have you ever seen Labor Party councillors, Labor Party members of parliament, the federal Labor member, turn their nose up and basically say to residents in the community in Western Sydney and in Parramatta 
in the wider, wider you know, northwest and, and western Sydney region that, oh no, this is a bad idea, you know, we don't care. And so, I've asked you, and so, you know, I, I just, I, you know, I, I just, I, I just look at my, I look, look at it, and I, I shake my head, I, I, I don't understand it. I, I don't, I, 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 can, I can make an assumption in terms of where the Labor Party membership has gone over that, over that uh, two decades period. <laughs> uh, uh, Julia, Julia Finn would know a lot, of, lot about that and... <laughs> Lord, Lord Mayor, yeah, count, the, member for Can the member for Granville has never been raised in debate, Lord Mayor. Yeah. If I could ask Councillor Jeffries to stick to the issues. It's no, not, I'm just point of, order, point of order, point of order. Councillor, it's not, it's not a point of order. Uh, it's, it's, it's okay, Councillor Ezra, I'm on your side, actually. Don't worry, I'm actually on your side. <laughs> Councillor Jeffries, please. Uh, look, uh, look I, I guess, look, I, I, I'm, I'm, look, I, I, I just want to say this. I, 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 look, whilst, whilst, I, whilst I, I understand, I, 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 whilst I, I'm probably personally have some sympathy for some of the arguments that have been put forward tonight by, by some of the councillors here about the, it's about the cost and, and so forth. I'm someone who, who does believe in small government, efficient government, okay? So I don't run away from that. Yeah. But... And I and I understand and I understand the importance of, of heritage and, and, and Willow Grove. I, I don't don't run away from that either. And it's disappointing how this has all come about. As Councillor Zader has pointed out, it's not perfect. To, to get from to get from where we started, from where council started and the old uh, council to where we are tonight, the situation is not perfect. We all know that. Could it have been done better? Yes. Could it have been handled another way? Absolutely. Right. Okay. But for a major political party to reject this sort of investment, to reject the families, to reject our our community, for you know to to side with to side with one you know one small loud virulent cohort of this community. You know, I, 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 I'm, I, 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 I wouldn't say I'm shocked because I'm not shocked. But the, the reality is, the reality is, tur to turning their, turning themselves away for for votes for the next pre-selection for whatever it is, I, I don't understand. But <laughs> Mr. Lord Mayor, you know, this is a, a this will be the final outcome. The final product will be a fantastic investment for our community. Fantastic investment, not just for Parramatta, but for wider Sydney. You know, I, I remember as a school kid doing a, doing a, a trip or two or an excursion into, into, into town. You go in there, you get there by 10.30, you have to go home by 2 o'clock, get back or 1.30, get back to the school, you get, you know, you get three hours as an excursion. Imagine all the kids, all the thousands of kids in the schools in this area, they'll be, they'll be coming down here, into here, coming down to this, this great city, right? So... For the Labor Party and their councillors and, and their federal MP and their state MP to reject this facility, this, this fantastic investment in this city and our community. Outrageous. I rest my case. Thank you, Councillor. I think we have Councillor Garrard. He's been champing at the bit there. He's been very patient. Sorry, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Garrard, I'm sorry I missed your earlier call. Sorry. Councillor Garrard, you're speaking. Thank you. Which way? Um, I'll speak. Councillor um, Prosef, can we hear in silence, please? Councillor Garrard. I'll speak for the motion and against the amendment. Against the amendment, um, okay, fine. So, um, I think what I've heard from the other side of the chamber um, is all I keep saying is that we're knocking back such a significant investment. Why would we not accept what the state government is offering us? Now, I haven't disagreed with anything that um, my colleagues next to me have stated. However, I don't believe that we're knocking back an investment at all. I know that when I've spoken to um, our Labor councillors on this issue, it's not been about not wanting a museum and not wanting investment in Parramatta. I think the biggest issue that we've got at the moment is we don't want the museum on that site at the expense of losing Willow Grove and the St George's Terrace. There has been um, proposals um, for North Parramatta um, where the light rail, I believe, is going right through there. 
if the state moves the museum to another location, I think half the problems that um, Western Sydney, Parramatta people, other councillors have said, MPRAG, um, and different groups around the place, I think that's what we're asking for. Nobody is saying we don't want investment in Parramatta and we don't want a museum in Parramatta. I don't think it's necessary that we get the Powerhouse Museum. It's been said so many times over, why can't we get our own museum? Why can't Western Sydney get a museum? Why does the museum have to go on that site at the expense of heritage? What has happened with this council, and I've said it in this chamber a number of times, this chamber purchased Willow Grove for its longevity, to save it so that it could be integrated into the part of Sydney in relation to the Civic Link Corridor. That's why we purchased it initially and there's a couple of councillors in this room that actually supported that purchase. We can't change the fact, I guess, the state through an administrator has come in and we've lost our prime site. And it's not our site, it's our ratepayer site, it's our community site. And uh, Councillor Jeffries has referred to being a member of the Liberal Party for a period of time. I've been a member of the community in Parramatta my whole life and I would like us as a chamber to continue with the vision we had on the foreshore, on the foreshore and that strategy that retained Willow Grove and um, the St George Terraces in that. The state owned North Parramatta Precinct where the Cumberland Hospital is. There is no reason why with all this great investment that everybody else on the other side of the room has mentioned um, in relation to jobs, investment, tourism coming on to Parramatta, we want that. There's no one in this chamber that wouldn't want that for the city we're representing. It doesn't have to be that site at the expense of, you know, Australia, one of Australia's oldest houses. It doesn't have to be. And I think that's the point that's been lost. And all the motion was asking for was not to provide the feedback tonight and endorse the feedback of the EIS until, if possible, we get a meeting with the Premier to discuss the options in relation to retaining Willow Grove, potentially them changing the design. And if we're super lucky, like buying a lottery ticket, getting them to move the whole site somewhere else. That would be my grand dream in relation to the issue we face now. Now, is it going to happen? That comes back to the state. But it's also been said over there, it's not going to happen and now we shouldn't be um, kicking the gift horse in the mouse. Well, I don't think because they think we're not going to get it. It's not a reason to fight it. If it's something that the community want and we feel passionate about, why wouldn't we continue to argue the point and fight for what we believe in until such time the state, as the decision maker, say no? And if that means bulldozers come in, we've lost the fight. We can't give up the fight, though, before we've had a real chance to make a difference. And I think that's the purpose of the amendment. No one is saying we don't want investment. No one is saying we don't want the jobs. No one is saying that... Parramatta doesn't deserve what the state is providing us. All we're saying is talk to us as a chamber and listen that there is an alternative to what's already been proposed. Need an extension, and Councillor. It All doesn't, favour. It yeah, doesn't yeah. have to be the site where it's at. And I know something that would never possibly happen, but give us our site back. Refund, we'll refund you the underpayment we got for the site, take your museum, put it in North Parramatta, it's still part of the geographical centre of the CBD, it's just not on that location. And then actually every single person, there'd be not one thing they could complain about. Western Sydney gets a museum, we get to retain our heritage and the Riverbank site, the powerhouse can stay where it is. It, it, it really, I think at the end of the day, keeps absolutely everybody happy. So let me just be clear, I do not believe and not in one media, media article that I've read has anybody said they don't want the investment in Parramatta. What people are saying is we don't want to lose Willow Grove and there is an alternative. 
there is a business case that has been put forward to the state government in relation to other locations. So, so your time's up. I just want to make it clear, we are not rejecting, we are not not investing. We're asking to be listened to in relation to the location and what has been proposed. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Easter, thanks for your patience, Councillor Easter. No, thank you, thank you Lord Mayor. You're, you're speaking, um, obviously. Uh, for the amendment, Lord Mayor. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Now, I have been patient, Lord Mayor. And not patient to talk, but patient with this chamber because I think there's a gross misunderstanding. And I sat here not wanting to talk, but I don't think anyone understands what's actually going on. Councillor Zader said it's political games, and I absolutely agree. The Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Davies have come up and said we shouldn't give up the fight. Well, let me just try to correct them. Lord Mayor, I think we've already won the fight. I think we won the fight when a powerhouse museum or the Museum of Arts and Science got awarded to Parramatta. That was the fight, Lord Mayor. That was the fight above all fights. That was the fight against every other city in New South Wales, Lord Mayor. It was a fight against every other council in New South Wales, and we won it. And now, after we've won it, we've got people on the other side saying, oh, do you know what, I don't like it. It's like Councillor Davies saying, I was scared of my mother. Yeah, I was. I'm a disciplined child. <laughs> in Christmas Council in 1985, Lord Mayor, Councillor Davies probably got a Sega Master System, but didn't want it because she had an Atari and it was older. What? What? I just don't understand, Lord Mayor. The fight's been had. We've won it. We don't want the shiny new thing because we've got the old one. The fight's been had, Lord Mayor. This city's won the fight. Western Sydney's won the fight. The government's won the fight. And I've got people on the other side saying, let's have another fight. When's it going to end? When are we going to be appreciative, Lord Mayor? When are we going to be appreciative of what Councilors, consecutive ladies, governments have done for this city, Lord Mayor? Now, whilst, whilst I didn't want to say anything, this is what drove me to say something. The only difference between the motions, Lord Mayor, the only difference is one's calling for a meeting with the Premier and one isn't. There's a few semantics about what the name of the powerhouse is, but that's it. That is it. We're both saying we want to retain Willow Grove. We're both saying we want to retain St George's Terrace. We've both got the same submission in the EIS. The exact same motions. One group here says they want a meeting with the Premier. Now, if I was the Premier, would I want a meeting? Would I say yes to a meeting with someone I've just given a billion dollars to and I've just looked it in the mouth? If I was the Premier, Lord Mayor, would I say yes to a meeting with someone who's just engaged the CFMEU to put a green ban on a site <laughs> and cost this city 2,300 jobs? Yes, jobs. I know it's bingo, Councillor Davies, and I know jobs might not be in the vocabulary of the ALP, but that's what it is. It's jobs. It's jobs that the CFMEU is standing in front of. It's jobs their own members need in a era of, a, of an era of a pandemic, Lord Mayor. Would I want a meeting with these people? Absolutely not, Lord Mayor, if I was the Premier. Absolutely not. Would I want a meeting, Lord Mayor, with the same people that had, had a go at the new stadium? No, I wouldn't. Would I want a meeting with the same people that had a go about a pool? No, I wouldn't. Would I have a meeting about the same people that had a go about... Uh, Parramatta Square? No, I wouldn't. Would I want a meeting with the same people that had, had a go about the light rail? No, I wouldn't. Would I have a meeting with the same people that had a go about the West Metro? No, I wouldn't. Would I have a meeting about the same pe with the same people that had a go about North Parramatta? No, I wouldn't. In what world do you live in? In what world do you think the Premier is going to sit with you people and say, yeah, let's come in, have a yeah, cup of tea, Davis, have a Davis, cup of tea, right. let's have a cup of tea and discuss everything that you don't agree with me. I've given you a $1.5 billion museum, I've given you a light rail, I've given you a museum, I've given you a new uh, pool, I've given, Davis, I've given you a West no, Metro, Mayor. but let's come and have a meeting because you're not happy. Lord Mayor, would you want to have a meeting with someone who disagrees with an international design competition, Lord Mayor, and, a, and an expert panel? I wouldn't want to do that either, Lord Mayor. The whole difference Councilor, between please. these two motions, Lord Mayor, is a meeting with the Premier so these guys can play political games. It's a disgrace, Lord Mayor, and I'm actually disappointed in them because I thought they were better than that. Excuse Thank me, you. Lord Mayor, can I just... Um, no, you call, can't. You, you no, there was misleading. No, I'm just saying that was misleading because... No, you because the, spoken, the, no, the amendment point actually of order, does Lord not Mayor. include yeah. part Point of order, two. Lord Mayor. What's your point Thank of order, Councillor? Lord Mayor, I have a point she, of order. You didn't say that. 
She doesn't have the right to sit there and speak, Lord anyway, Mayor, after she's already point, spoken, point, Lord Mayor. It's not a point of order, thank you. Councillor, you've already spoken. Uh, yes, it look, doesn't matter, there's no chance of clarification. We've already spoken. I Next. would just like to clarify the motion, Lord Mayor. That's you can't, all I'm you asking. can't do it. You can't do it. It's, Why you, not? It's, it's not a meat frakes, it can't meat frakes, doesn't allow it. Right, please so sit down. they can swear, but you I can't ask down, a please. question. Sit down, please, sit down. Now, before I go to the, the mover, Councillor Wern, you're the only one who hasn't spoken. Do you want to speak at all, Councillor Wern? <laughs> Councillor Wern. So I'll save my breath. Councillor Wern, you're saving your breath. So the, we have a Thank mover you. here. Uh, you, speaking in reply. Speaking in reply. Sorry? Okay, we'll, move, we'll, we'll vote on the amendment, okay? All right, well, I, you're correct. Sorry, sorry, you're correct, you're correct. Okay, we've got an amendment moved by Councillor Zeta. All, that's right, we have. Councillor Zeta's moved it. All those in favour of the motion by Councillor Zeta, please raise your hand. Hmm? The amendment. Yeah, the amendment. They've moved by the amendment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You've got to move the amendment first. Moving the amendment. Well, can we just... Well, we does Councillor Wern want to speak before I make my reply? Right. Just say, oh, she doesn't want to, sorry. Councillor, we will get Thank to speak. No. Let's, uh, Thank I'll, you. I'll, I think Councillor uh, Esber should be able to speak in, in Lord reply. Lord Mayor, I, I think it speaks if, it, if the amendment's lost, he speaks yeah. in reply. No, no, I move the motion. No, he speaks in reply. Just, uh, can, can, we can we just clarify that? Can we just get a clarify for the motivating big practice? Just one second. Hang on. Hmm. So you can speak. On the amendment, you can speak on it. Speak on the amendment. It's you all been speak. said. I want to speak on the motion. And and you speak on the motion. You correct? You can speak on the motion. Thank yeah. you, Lord Mayor. And I thank the, the chamber. Move, the original mover can speak on the motion. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And I thank the chamber. Look, sorry. Look, can I just clarify? Is Councillor Esbeth speaking for the motion or speaking in reply? In reply, I don't believe motion. that code of media practice allows him to do that, but it does allow him to talk in favour of the motion because he hasn't spoken yet. No, no, he's. Yeah, he's he's right to right. All right. I'm getting I'm ruling. It's just ruling on the code of practice. The motion. On the motion. On the amendment or the motion. I want to speak on the motion. The okay, amendment's been on the motion. You're All right, now, the okay, Lord. Point Mayor. of order, Lord Mayor. Yeah. Councillor Esbar spoke to the motion when he moved it, and he reserved his right in his reply. Yeah. That's exactly what happens. That's and now right. he's talking in reply. reply. Is it allowed in reply. or not? Speaking in reply. Right. You can't. To my motion. No, yeah, no. It's you my can motion. speak on the motion or the amendment. So I'm really speaking in reply of the right. motion, okay. Lord Mayor. Right. Right. Okay. To close the debate, then we put it to a vote. That's it. That's right. It. Thank That's you. It. That's it. Lord Mayor, a lot's been said tonight, and there's a lot going to be said in the future. What this side of the chamber has want is they want the powerhouse to come to Parramatta. We want an arts and cultural precinct in Parramatta, but we don't want to lose it for the sake of the heritage of items of Willow Grave at St George's Terrace. And there are quite a few speakers on this, Lord Mayor. Could I bring to the attention of Councillor Jeffries, where he's, he's given us a history lesson in the Hawke and Keating governments about heritage. I could say to him through you, Lord Mayor, to Councillor Jeffries, that if Paul Keating was still the Prime Minister, he would make sure that the heritage would stay and we'd probably fund it, and you'd know that. <laughs> Lord Mayor, Councillor Zeta said... Please let the speaker no, in, what in what silence. Getting, thank on. you, Lord Mayor. What thank I'm you. getting to, Lord Mayor, is that... Councils were saying we're politicising it. We're not politicising this. Not one of us has politicised this. Other members opposite have politicised this. They want to rev this Council, up. Please, please silence, please. For the, they for want the to rev this up where Council says there's great misunderstanding. Yes, it is a great misunderstanding for the people of Parramatta. There aren't many people who want this. There are hundreds of people... <coughs> Excuse me. There are hundreds of people who are against the demolition of the heritage items like us. We, don't, we want this, but we don't want to lose this. We don't want to forsake heritage for this. We've got to have a future, Lord Mayor. This city cannot have a future if it doesn't have a past. We need to show my grandchildren now that I'm a grandparent, and we could say to them, this is what happened 100 years ago or 120 years ago or 130 years ago. We have to have a past. Lord Mayor, I had the privilege of going to... Councillor, he said, please, come on. We could, we've Lord Mayor, he was heard in silence. silence. I asked for the, the, yeah, well, no, the respect to be reciprocated. You Thank you. understand that. We're Thank you. the same ruling all the time. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor... I, had, I was fortunate enough to go to be in Europe for Christmas, Lord Mayor, yeah. and I learnt a lot over there by just seeing a lot of buildings where contemporary buildings were standing next to buildings that are five or 600 years old, 400 years old. And I'm thinking to myself, we're still a young country. We're only 230-odd years old. 
Why can't we design our buildings to correlate with our past? Because then you can sit back and say, this is contemporary, this is what we were, this is where we've come to now. We have to do this as a council. We are not saying we don't want this. We are seeking just an urgent meeting with the Premier because... Councillor Issa, please. No urging, please. If you no find urging. a funny, Councillor Issa, Councilor Esber, please okay. show respect to the Chamber. Yeah, Councillor Issa, go on. Lord Mayor, we are seeking an urgent, urgent meeting with the Premier to discuss these issues. To discuss these issues because they are important to us. We've been inundated. I've been inundated with phone calls and emails from residents and constituents saying that they want these preserved. I'm, do I'm just carting up my upright of what I had to do as a local councillor for the area for a person who was born and raised in this area and still here for the last 58 years. And I'm proud to be part of it, Lord Mayor. And I just think we have to exhaust all avenues. We want this. We want this to go ahead. There are budgets that have been uh, sprayed around the chamber tonight, Lord Mayor. Uh, the local member on radio last week said it was $654 million. Councillors tonight were saying it was $1 billion to $1.5 billion. Thank God they're not the treasurers in the organisation, Lord Mayor, because I think we need to get this right. We need to get this right. But we have to, what we have to do, to do is preserve what the future is going to hold for us. This is a passionate issue to a lot of councillors. Some people think we're politicising it. Some people may think that. They, that. They're right to think that. But we have to get this right. If we can't get this right, we won't have a future and we need to preserve this, Lord Mayor. As far as relocation, I don't, believe, I don't believe you can pick up a heritage item and move it. It just doesn't happen. Once you've moved it, it's lost all its heritage, it's lost all its value. Can I just say, Lord Mayor, that it's only asking for another couple of weeks that we, see, we convene with the Premier, come back on July the 16th, which is two weeks from tonight, so we can have our submission in by the 21st of July. Cool heads need to prevail here, Lord Mayor. It's only asking for two more weeks. Let's get our, take our opportunity. The Premier is always saying that her door is always open to speak to the community and the Premier of the, uh, the state that she represents. Let's go out there and talk to her with yourself, with interested councillors. I'm not saying this side, that side of the chamber or this side. Any councillor who can, go and speak with the Premier led by you, Lord Mayor. And I think this needs to happen. Thank you, Councillor. The, the, the Movers Mood has spoken in reply. Um, we have uh, an amendment and a, and a motion. I'll uh, move the amendment, moved by Councillor Zeta. All those in, yeah, we have. Well, account, all those in favour of the, the, the amendment by Councillor Zeta, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those against? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's seven all. Uh, I rule, uh, obviously, in my casting vote in favour of the amendment. So I move that the amendment now becomes the motion. All those in favour of the motion by Councillor Zeta. Six, seven. Me, All those against. All the names recorded, please, you, Lord Mayor. You, you, oh, councillor, you can't. Councillor, you're too late. You, you should have called call for a division. It's too late. Sit down, please. You can't call a division. It's too late. With respect, Lord Mayor, this is part of planning, Lord Mayor. These names have to be registered. They have to be documented. You don't, it's not necessary in terms of the current meeting practice. Come on, councillors. Those in favour of the motion, put your hands up, please. One, I think you know who they are. Three, four, five, six, seven. Those against. Those against, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, uh, I, I, in my casting vote, I declare that the motion is carried. We have a division you, oh, well, you can have your motion. It doesn't matter. We've already recorded them. OK, well, well, if you've up and you've you can have your division. That's fine. That's OK. All those in favour of the, uh, uh, the motion move to this side. We're already here. You can stand up. All those on that side. So, Lord, to, just to be clear, these guys are voting against the retention of Willow Grove. Just that's, to be clear. That's what it is. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. So, excuse I'll... me, Lord Mayor. Yeah. Why is it that one law, one rule is for them and another for us? Can we just focus on the division? Pick up the toys. Pick up the toys that you just thrown out of the so, councillors, we call for a division. The names were recorded by the uh, minute clerk. Councillors, please. The councillors on this side are named. I think you can see all their names. Yep. All those against stand up on the other side for the division. They're recorded. I presume Councillor Wern's in that side. Councillor Wern's in there. We've got all the names. I declare the motion on this side carried. Thank you. Chose not to have a meeting with the Premier. Oh Councillors, I now declare the meeting closed at 8.10.